Hey everybody, it's Albie. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Um, sorry for the long, long delays between videos. It's just been really a busy summer and um, health stuff. So um, I am going to try to get back fully into the swing of things. And so I thought I'd start off with coming back by doing a mid-month wrap-up. Um, so, so far in June, I've read five books and overall they've been pretty good. Um, the first book I read this month was um, the first in a Tessa Bailey duet. It was Secretly Yours. Um, it was pretty good. So um, I actually gave it three stars, which I think is the lowest I've ever given a Tessa Bailey book. Um, but it, it was good. It just wasn't great. To me, it just kind of over, uh, just didn't have her typical Tessa Bailey magic in the story. It follows Hallie, who is a florist and Julian, who's like a, a kind of like a billionaire playboy type of thing, but not like a jerky playboy. And they've secretly kind of, well, Hallie's secretly been in love with, love with him for years. It's sort of like a childhood crush to um, romance trope. It is a rom-com. It does have an element of secret admirer. Um, it just overall, the story kind of fell flat for me. Um, I did enjoy the characters, but I just wasn't connected to them. And the romance just seemed a little silly. I know someone had a real big problem with how Julian sort of kind of objectified Hallie, especially with her large bust, but I kind of forgave the author of that because it was sort of done when Julian was in a, a solo moment of passion, if you know what I mean, and so it's sort of like uh, the author was relaying his um, fantasy into like a fruition by having it written in the story, but it wasn't like real time. He was oogling her, so... I didn't have too much problem with that, but the book overall just wasn't um, wasn't as good as usual, so that was kind of a real bummer. Um, now, I did read the sequel, which just came out, which is unfortunately yours. Now, that one, I gave five stars. I really loved it. So this one is the sequel. It features Natalie Voss, who's Julian's, uh, I think, older sister. I'm never quite sure how the siblings work. Um, and she is having financial problems. She's returned home to the Napa Valley area from New York. She kind of had her business kind of fail. And so she wants to get um, her money back and her trust fund. But in order to get her trust fund, she has to be uh, married. And so she ends up bumping into August Cates, who's sort of like a, he was kind of like an almost one night stand sort of guy. They like got together or making out, but never really sealed the deal, I'm pretty sure. And um, she was sort of like, liked him and then kind of loathes him now. And August uh, liked her and then kind of loathes her and then kind of falls in love with her. <laughs> so I absolutely really love this story. So this one was a five star read for me. Had all the magic that I love from a Tessa Bailey rom-com. It had really good spice. The characters were enjoyable. Um, I thought this worked as a marriage of convenience trope. I know someone uh, on Instagram was complaining that like, I'm so tired of, um, second, uh, Ram, I can't talk, uh, marriage of convenience tropes where it's like the billionaire can't get their money. So they have to get married. It's like, well, it just kind of works for me. I don't know. I mean, romance novels to me are always layered in a little bit of fantasy. Unfortunately, you know, I don't really think people have, um, perfect Tessa Bailey inspired rom-coms in real life. If they do, I think they're really lucky and I think they're probably from like the 1940s and 50s probably more so than the 2020s. But I like this story. Um, it just was, it was really my jam. It had a really cute um, cat. I think her name was Menace. Someone thought the cat was a boy, <coughs> but Menace was referred to as a she, but on the cover, Menace has a, a bow tie collar. So maybe um, Menace was <laughs> misgendered. I know cats uh, kind of have a little bit of ambiguous genitalia because I don't know <laughs> you kind of if you have a cat it's a little harder to check uh, if it's a male or female more so than a dog um, but I thought she was Menace was always a female cat I don't know <laughs> but someone was saying uh, Menace was a boy I was like oh, I think she was a girl unless it was I don't know I, I was really invested because I ha I've had a cat and my dad has a cat so I'm like <laughs> sort of used to is it a boy or a girl cat sort of thing so I don't know uh, speaking of cats, I did get sent a, um, a cozy mystery. Uh, I just started getting into cozy mysteries again. Um, a few of my friends have jumped on the bandwagon, and I was like, why not join them? I mean, I love Murder, She Wrote. My cat was literally named Fletcher after Jessica Fletcher, um, so I thought I'd get it some cozy mysteries to read. So this one's called Death Steals the Spotlight. It's book three in the Urban Tales Pet Shop Mysteries. And it was really a cute story. So let me get my notes. It stars Shell McMillan. She is a 
kind of like once upon a time B-list television actress that her show kind of flops and so she goes back to her hometown after her aunt passes away and she inherits her aunt's like beautiful mansion and um well beautiful home I'm not sure if it's a mansion and inherits her aunt's pet shop and it turns out that wherever she goes uh, mystery and murder and troubles follow, but you know, in a cozy way, they're not like very vicious. They're kind of like reading, um, Nancy Drew books where it's like, uh, you know, nothing too gory or a lot of British mystery shows are basically cozy mysteries. Like, um, my dad likes Midsummer Murders and then I really like the Miss Fisher mysteries, um, a lot or, um, Poirot and, uh, Miss Marple. Those are basically the archetype of the cozy mystery. So, Shell McMillan, as I said, is like a reformed uh, star of Hollywood. I don't think she's ever that big. It's not like Jennifer Lawrence coming home, you know, to open a pet shop. But um, it was a cute story. I will say this was the third in a series, and I did like that it kind of did that um, Nancy Drew thing, where in like two paragraphs it kind of tells you who Nancy, well, like how who Nancy Drew was and her shtick and it kind of did the same thing for shell and uh how she kind of became a um, amateur sleuth so i did like that i didn't feel like i had to um read the series in order i wasn't lost although there was a character named gary and i'm not quite sure what he and shell's relationship was because it seemed like shell was single and she kind of had some like stuff going on with this guy named josh but then gary was always at her house so i don't know if they were roommates if Gary is uh, gay, <laughs> if uh, she and him are just platonic or what, but it was just a little confusing because it wasn't explained. I'm sure it is like in the first or second book. And I like the series enough that I would go back and purchase um, books one and two. I think they're like $4.99 on Amazon. I, I'm pretty sure it's an independent um, publishing house, so that's good that the prices are reasonable. It's not like $15 for an ebook. Y'all, I can't with that. <laughs> I draw the line, but um, Death. Death Steals the Spotlight by T.C. Motempio was really good. I did enjoy it. It was five stars. Um, I did read another rom-com this month, and that was A Long Time Coming by Megan Quinn. Um, this was my first Megan Quinn book. Um, I get the hype. I thought the book was good. I just didn't love it like I thought I would. This is book three in a series. I was perfectly fine with reading book three and not having read books one or two because they're all sort of like these three brothers that are billionaires and each one gets a romance sort of thing so it wasn't like they built on one another if there was a brother mentioned he was with his significant other but it didn't it's not going to ruin the books for me if I go back and read them etc but what really drew me to this one or, or this book in particular was that i I was either told or I heard that it was kind of a gender swap of my best friend's wedding. And that is one of my all-time favorite movies. I just love that film with um, Julie Roberts and Dermot Maloney, is that his name? <laughs> and Cameron Diaz. I, I just really absolutely love that film. Um, so I was really excited for that. Um, but it was more so like a loose trope of that instead of like a full-fledged um, kind of remake or gender swap remake of it. Um, so our heroine was Leah. Fair Weather Fern. Um, she's kind of at a crossroads because her both of her parents, I think, died unexpectedly not too long before this book started. So I'm not sure if that's mentions and mentioned in books one or two. But she's sort of at a crossroads, and the guy that she was dating is like, uh, "Will you marry me?" And she's like, "Yeah," because she doesn't really know what to do with her life. She, um, you know, I wouldn't know how to imagine dealing with that at any time. So she just sort of goes with the flow and is engaged to this guy. And what's weird is like this guy is wealthy and like uh, he's like hard working and wealthy. So like he runs like a business or something like that. So um, Beaker, who is like her best friend since college, who is the one that's always been in love with her. He's been like a born into money billionaire playboy sort of thing. So I don't know. That was just kind of annoying. Um, I didn't have annoyance with the billionaire trope in the Tessa Bailey's, but part of it was in the second book, it was um, a female billionaires. And so I was like, I'm not going to hate on a, a woman in business, you know, plus I want the good vibes of becoming a billionaire. <laughs> so I don't want to hate on a billionaire. So I want to get that fruition to me. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, this book which just felt, fell flat for me and it was long. What's up with these independent authors that are writing 500 page romance novels? There was one I really wanted to read called I think it's like Before I Go to Sleep or something like that. It's like a Aswigo, is that the name? Uh, I think it's a Native American indigenous uh, sleepwalker monster romance. And that book's like 800 pages. I'm like, 
mm, you know, I can deal with like a 250 page Ruby Dixon. I don't know if I could read like a 900 page Ice Planet Barbarian because sometimes those books kind of run out of steam, <laughs> you know, they're very um, formulaic, but I like that. I don't read all of them at once, which I think has helped me not get burned out on the Ice Planet series. But I just can't with some of these books that are just so long. I feel like um, if they were mainstreamed, they would definitely have a good edit. I don't know. Uh, I know that sounds a little mean, but, you know, sometimes criticism has to be a little little truthful. And I just felt like the book could have, could have been thinned out a little. And I saw that Bloom Publishing um, picked up the series and they gave them new covers. And all they did was cartoonify the shirtless guys. And it's just like, okay, <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know. But um, anyway, a long time coming. It was three stars. The spice was good. The spice almost had me want to up the um, the star level just because it was really good. But I had to wait so long <laughs> for that. And not only did I have to wait long for it, but it wasn't like he was always in love with her. It was like, oh, I'm not in love with her. She's just my friend. And then it was like, oh, wait, I am. So it wasn't like pining or angsty. It was kind of like that doing. Uh, realization that oh yeah I always have loved her sort of thing and I was like whatever <laughs> I was I was kind of done with the book I was like okay I need to just power through and finish this so it was okay it was good um, I get the hype I would read something else by Ms. Quinn I don't think I would pick up the other books in the series just because um, I don't I don't like slow burn and this was just I don't know I need like a fast burn Megan Quinn's if you know of any of her books that are like fast burns uh, let me know and I will pick one of those up to enjoy <laughs> and then um, the fifth book that I've read so far this month was a novella it's called The Vampire in the Bookstore by L. Andrew I didn't write like a full review for it because um, I didn't see a point because it's so short uh, if I wrote anything it would kind of like give away the whole story um, I gave it five stars, but it wasn't like I loved it. It was more so like it did its job as a novella, and I gave it the five star because I looked at what it was and did it deliver what it was kind of supposed to deliver, if that makes sense. So it wasn't like, oh, five star literary mirror. It was more like, okay, it did its job. It did it well. A. <laughs> you know? It wasn't like I was going through and looking at everything. But it was vampire romance. I honestly don't remember the heroine's name. Um, I think the hero had like a... Galen maybe his name was he was like from Ireland or something it was kind of random um I don't want to there well there was something at the end that I didn't really care for but it wasn't like bad it was just like oh I don't like when they do that sort of thing in vampire romances so um yeah it was spicy it was good it's about 140 pages I read it in literally under an hour <laughs> I picked it up at midnight uh last Sunday and I was like oh I'll just read the first chapter and then I read the whole book because I was like reading it so fast I was like well I might as well just read the whole thing <laughs> So, uh, Vampire in the Bookstore, it was cute. It was cute. Um, like I said, uh, five stars, but I took, I took it for what it was. So it was a fun time. I think it's like two fifty or two ninety nine on the Amazon. So if you need a short book to read in an hour or two to get to your goal of, um, 7,000 books for the year, um, add it to your list because you can get to 7,001 really quickly. Well, everyone, I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment, and I will see y'all soon for another video. Bye everyone.